the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <clears throat> Good morning to every one of you. Thank you for joining us in our worship time. On behalf of the family of St. Matthias' Church, I extend our greetings and warm welcome to this worship time. I know it's not only our church members, many other members uh, all over the state and all over the world uh, participate in this worship time. So thank you for joining us in this worship time. God bless you and your families. God is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. So let's bow down our heads in prayer. Loving God, we thank you for this wonderful morning. Lord, we thank you for the nice sleep and rest. And today, as we begin this day in your presence, we humbly ask you to bless each and every one of us. Lord, we all are your children. You are our dear Father. Oh Lord, you have sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to die on the cross for our salvation. You have given us the Holy Spirit who sanctifies us every day, every minute, who always strengthens us and gives us your wisdom so that we can lead a good Christian life. Lord, be present in our midst, accept our praise, our meditation and our prayers. Let this worship time be a blessed one to each and every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us glorify the Lord by singing the opening hymn. Dearly beloved, today we observe the 12th Sunday after Trinity. So let's spend some time in prayer. First, I would like to offer the collect for this day and then move on to a general prayer. I expect all of you to close your eyes and concentrate on the words that we pray. Almighty and everlasting God, who art always more ready to hear than we to pray, and art wont to give more than either we desire or deserve, pour down upon the abundance of thy mercy, forgiving us those things whereof 
our conscience is afraid and giving us those good things which we are not worthy to ask but through the merits and mediate mediation of Jesus Christ thy son our lord amen let us continue to pray gracious heavenly father we worship you as a god of love and patience help us o oh god to love all your children as you have loved us and be patient with them as you are with us we confess our total failure in living up to your expectation we lift our hands to you and say we are weak strengthen us with your power and graces thank you father for the christian families you have placed here and there in our localities and all over this world forgive us for isolating ourselves from others and not interacting with them even though sometime it happens within the family even among the relatives oh lord we are overtaken by the spirit of impersonalness that prevails everywhere in this modern days help us initiate a gathering of a couple of families for worshiping you and fellowshipping with one another lord even through online gathering help us to pray together and glorify your holy name together oh lord we humbly ask you to not only bless our families but to bless the wider family of church we place our congregations into your loving hands o oh lord lord we also place the human family that has spread all over this world as yes, master as a loving father you shower your blessing on all people even if they don't worship you even when they say that you don't exist you shower your blessings upon them your love is immeasurable as yes, master continue to strengthen us with your love with your peace with your joy in jesus name we pray amen now we shall hear the epistle portion for this day the epistle for the 12th sunday after trinity is taken from paul's second letter to the corinthians chapter 3 reading from verse 4 to corinthians chapter 3 reading from the fourth verse such trust have we through christ to god word not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves but our sufficiency is of god who also hath made us sufficient as ministers of a new covenant not of the letter but of the spirit for the letter killeth but the spirit giveth life but if the ministration of death written and engraven in stone was glorious so that the children of israel could not steadfastly behold the face of moses for the glory of the countenance which glory was to be done away how shall not the ministration of the spirit be rather glorious or if the ministration of condemnation of glory much much doth the ministration of righteousness exceed in glory here ends the reading of the epistle the holy gospel of our lord jesus christ according to saint mark 
chapter 7 verses beginning from 31 to 37. Then he returned from the region of Tyre and went through Sidon to the Sea of Galilee. In the region of the Decapolis and they brought to him a man who was deaf and had a speech impediment. And they begged him to lay his hand on him. And taking him aside from the crowd privately, he put his finger into his ears. And after spitting, touched his tongue. And looking up to heaven, he sighed and said to him, Ephata, that is, be opened. And his ears were opened, his tongue were released, and he spoke plainly. And Jesus charged them to tell no one. But the more he charged them, the more zealously they proclaimed it. And they were astonished beyond measure, saying, He has done all things well. He even makes the deaf hear and the mute speak. Here ends the gospel portion. Praise be unto you, O Christ. Let us once again glorify the Lord by singing another hymn. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Dearly beloved, once again I greet you all in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining us in this worship time. <clears throat> God has been faithful to us in, by way of protecting us and showering all his blessings upon us. Let's thank God for the material blessings and the spiritual blessings, temporary blessings and eternal blessings. May the Lord be with us and continue to strengthen us and protect us from this deadly virus. And today I would like to share a few thoughts from the... Uh, gospel portion that was read to us today. This Sunday is dedicated for the handicapped. All over this world there are many, many people who have handicapped in one way or the other. Handicap is, dis is defined in this way. Handicapped person is the one who has some condition that significantly restrict 
restrict one's ability to function physically or mentally or socially in a normal way. Someone said <clears throat> in a positive way, our very infirmities help us unexpectedly. Uh, William James was the person who said this. And some of came up with uh, some life history which clearly tells us, yes, in the midst of their handicaps, they were able to do great things. For example, Milton, a great poet, was a blind person, it seems. And we know about Beethoven. He was very sickly. He was a very, very, very great uh, musician. But he was deaf. And he had other ailments also. Helen Killer, we all know her, a brilliant person, but she was blind and deaf. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this is not to say that you can be a handicapped person. Yes, it's true that in the midst of our handicap, God empowers us, gives us other talents so that we can shine in this world. But at the same time, we should not conclude that it is God's will that a child should be born with physical or mental handicap. Actually, I was in uh, St. Andrew's Kirk, Egmo, where we have a school for special children. We call it Asha. Once in a year, those children and the parents would join our worship service. That was the only time I am allowed to speak in Tamil. Otherwise, it's an English congregation. On that day, uh, I speak in English as well as in Tamil for the sake of the parents and the children. So I was asking uh, other people what I should preach. I talked with the parents and other people and I found that our preaching is very essential for those parents because they not only suffer financially, but also mentally. You know our Indian situation. You no, know, people talk so many things. You no, know, many parents said, Pastor, our relatives and other people, our neighbors, all say that we have committed some sin so that our child is punished. Many a time it was a simple uh, negligence, okay? Um, sometimes it is a, a close uh, relative marriage, you now marrying sister's uh, daughter, that sort of a close uh, relationship. Or sometimes they take antibiotics when the child was in the womb. That affects the child. So there are many other reasons also. But you know, the society, they always connect sin and sickness together. So, in their heart, they always feel guilty, the parents. They always feel guilty. What did I do so that my child should suffer in this way? And many a time, for non-Christians, there is no hope for the child. At least for our Christians, we have the hope of resurrection. So I, I would always boldly tell them, only Jesus Christ can give hope to your children. There is no hope in other faiths. In Christianity, we have hope that at least one day, when Jesus comes, these children will be in a normal way like you and me.
as the scripture clearly says, there will be no more sickness, no more pain, no more suffering. The blind will see, the lame will walk, and the deaf will hear. In the same way, these special children will also become normal when Jesus comes and transforms them. Now, today's passage clearly tells that Yes, even though God allows some people to live with their handicaps all through their life, even though he works in and through them to do great things, we should always take this passage to mean that God doesn't have the sickness or handicap in his original plan. Here we see Jesus Christ taking initiative and healing the person who was deaf and dumb. <clears throat> now, I would like to uh, share with you a few thoughts from this uh, uh, gospel portion, giving you three titles, subtitles, I would say. <clears throat> One, people's faith. Number two, Jesus' action. Number three, people's response. Now, if you look at the passage, we come to know that Jesus entered into a region called Decapolis. Deca means ten, polis means cities in Greek. Uh, when Alexander the Great in uh, 323 BC, when he wanted to conquer the whole world, he crossed Israel and he conquered it and he established cities and placed Greek people in those cities so that they could spread the Greek culture. Now Jesus came to that region. So it's a mixed cosmopolitan cities. And there again, he wanted to preach the word of God. Now, the scripture says, there were some people who brought the deaf and dumb and begged him, literally begged him to heal this person. Dear brothers and sisters in Christ, this is a model for you and me. We are called to bring people to Jesus Christ through prayer or literally. So, as Christians who are called the royal priest, we are called to bring people to Jesus Christ. And they came with faith, definitely. That's why the scripture says, they brought him and begged him to heal. And they believed in the power of Jesus Christ. They acknowledged the authority of Jesus Christ over Satan and sickness. So, when we bring people to Jesus Christ, or literally bringing them, or guiding them spiritually to accept Jesus Christ as a personal savior, or when we place people through our intercessory prayers, we should have this faith. Secondly, I am amazed to see how Jesus Christ reacted. We don't know who that person was, whether he was a Jew or a Gentile. Whoever it was, Jesus intervened in his life in a special way. Look at the things that he had done. The scripture says, Mark clearly tells us, that he took him aside. From the crowd, he took him aside. Then he put his finger, fingers in his ears. Then he spat on the ground. Then he touched his tongue. We won't normally do that. No, you don't touch the other people's tongue. But Jesus Christ touched the tongue. And then he looked up and sighed and said, Ephatha, that is be open. Now, why did Jesus do all these things? 
tell you blood dearly beloved i'll tell you jesus did all these things in order to develop his faith we all know that jesus performed miracle when people believed in him many a time he asked do you believe and many a time he said your faith has healed you many a time he appreciated people oh your faith is great so jesus always gave importance to faith yes he has the authority to heal other people if they don't believe even if they don't believe now for example when parents believed he healed children those children did not ask jesus christ to heal them but because of the faith of the parents he healed them many a time jesus healed the person because the people who brought the person had faith so whatever it is jesus christ gave importance to faith now why he had to do all these things see by doing all those things he made the person to believe in him see he can't hear he cannot respond because sometimes jesus asked uh, the blind man uh, what do you want and he was able to respond but this person he can't speak or he cannot hear so jesus used sign language sign language to communicate that that person should have faith in him and faith in god now look at the things he took them he took the person away telling him indirectly this is a decisive moment something is going to happen to you then he put his fingers in his ears implying i'm going to do something to your ear okay then spitting that spitting is always a sign of a uh, cursing something okay or something i don't agree with no disguising thing probably jesus christ were telling him no i don't like your sickness or your handicap i curse the satan that has brought the sickness or handicap in your life all this uh, symbolic action communicated one or the other message to that person then he looked up or oh, then he uh, touched his tongue telling him i am going to do something to your tongue then he looked up telling him something is going to happen because the person above god is going to intervene in your life then he sighed why he wanted to tell them i share your pain and suffering i share your agony then he said effata in aramaic it simply means be opened so that person was able to see the movement of his lips okay so he knew that he was saying something immediately the power of god descended on the person he was able to hear he was able to speak now the amazing thing is that <clears throat> people say those who are deaf cannot hear voice or the syllables or whatever other people say or pronounce because they were unable to hear they were unable to reproduce the sound many times they were able to speak but since they couldn't hear the sound properly they are unable to reproduce the vowels or consonants through the tongue through the mouth now here i see jesus christ not only healed his tongue and ears but he healed this brain also because it clearly says after jesus healed him he spoke plainly now what is the third one people's response they rejoiced at god they praised god glorified god 
and they went out and proclaimed the miracle to everyone now dear brothers and sisters in christ jesus jesus's action clearly tells us that jesus christ understands us he comes down to our level and enables us to have faith in him now like the people who responded to the miracle of jesus christ we are called to proclaim what god has done to us with other people share your testimony with other people because that will strengthen you that will strengthen others also and praise god always he has done marvelous things that's what people said yes even in the midst of this pandemic the lord wants you and me to see the good things and praise god for them yes when god allows certain things he allows us for a certain causes or purposes let's acknowledge that so give all glory to god and praise him for all the blessing that you have received from his loving hands let's pray loving god we once again come to you and place ourselves in your loving hands o lord thank you for this message o lord help us always to remember that we are called to bring people to you literally spiritually and even through intercessory prayers o lord help us always to remember that you come down to our level and help us develop our faith and receive your blessings o lord like the people who had praised you help us to glorify your holy name whenever we receive your blessings in our personal lives too o lord bless all those who are participating in this worship time enable them to lead a good christian life in jesus name we pray amen Dear beloved I would like to publish the bands of marriage between Mr Jason Emmanuel Joseph son of Mr Joseph Ravichandran and Mrs Angelin the bachelor and a communicant member of our church and Ms Jacinda Tursa daughter of Mr Chandra Mohan and Mrs Josephine and a communicant member of CSI St Peter's Church Meenam Bakkam if any of you know any cause or just impediment why these two persons should not be joined together in holy matrimony you are to declare it in writing to the presbyter of St Matthias Church Vipiri let us pray loving god we once again come to you and thank you for enabling us to publish the bands of marriage between Jason and Jacinda for the last time O oh Lord continue to be with them and uphold them and be with the families as they prepare for the wedding O oh Lord let thy presence be on the day of wedding and bless the wedding service as well as the reception program above all adorn them with divine qualities help them to lead a good christian family life in jesus name we pray amen
on behalf of all those in St. Matthias Church and on behalf of you also, I wish and congratulate all the people who are celebrating the birthdays and wedding anniversaries in this week. May the Lord be with you and bless you and lead you. Let's conclude this worship time with a word of prayer. Loving God, we once again come to you and place those who are celebrating birthdays and wedding anniversaries in this week. Bless them, O oh Lord. Continue to uphold them and enable them to celebrate many more happy birthdays and many more wedding anniversaries. O oh Lord, continue to be with us and protect us. Be with the leaders and guide them and help them to take the right decisions, O oh Lord. We also pray for the school children. Lord, continue to be with them and uphold them. We pray for the senior citizens. Lord, strengthen them and uphold them, O Lord. We also commit those who have lost their loved ones during this pandemic period. O Lord, strengthen those families. Wipe the tears and uphold them. Lord, thank you for this worship time. Continue to be with us and lead us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let us say the Lord's Prayer together. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with us and with our families now and always. Amen. Let us once again glorify the Lord by singing the closing hymn.